Welcome to In Via, the podcast where we're navigating the pilgrimage of life. We are all in via, on the way, and we are learning a lot as we go. I'm your host, Joan Watson. Join me as we listen to stories, discover travel tips, and learn more about our Catholic faith. Along the way, we'll see that if God seeks to meet us in Jerusalem, Rome, or Santiago, he also wants to encounter you right there in your car, on your run, or in the middle of your workday. Well, welcome back. We are talking today about pilgrimage because we throw that word around a lot. We're going to be throwing that word around a lot. And it's all, this podcast is all about navigating the daily pilgrimage of life um, while looking at actual physical pilgrimages we take. So John Paul, I'd love to talk today about what is a pilgrimage because we throw that idea around. I remember the first time I used it, I was planning it. My very first trip I planned in, um, I guess it was my second trip. I planned to Rome. I kept talking, calling everybody pilgrims and, uh, they were like, are we, do we have to wear like pilgrim hats? Like, are we like on the Mayflower? And I was like, no, that's not the right pilgrim. But, um, I think sometimes we do think of those pilgrims. And, uh, so let's, I'd love to talk about a pilgrimage and how a pilgrimage is different than a vacation or how a pilgrim is different than a tourist. And we talk about it a lot in verso and when we're getting people ready for trips, um, but what, what would you say to somebody who's like, well, you know, am I going on a pilgrimage to Rome? Am I going on a trip to Rome? Am I a tourist? What, who am I? What am I doing? Yeah. There's, there's so much misconception, I think about the word pilgrimage. Yeah. You know, there, there's so many myths about a pilgrimage, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. That people think that, yeah, again, they just, if they've never been on one, they, they have a lot of maybe built up under diff again, misconceptions about what it's yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember for instance, one of my family members, right? Okay, so I, I'm not going to name who it is, but <laughs> I remember inviting them. Hey, come with, come with me on this pilgrimage. Yeah, and they were like, "No, that why would I want to pray all day?" <laughs> 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 right? But their 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 envision their their thought of a pilgrimage was like we'd be like literally on our knees 24 sure. seven. No fun. We're not going to eat. We're not going to sleep. Like yeah. we're just going to pray, <laughs> fasting and going to mass all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Which uh, maybe some of our pilgrimages could use more of that uh, a little bit, but <laughs> no, but, but, you know, and they, it does they depend on the pilgrimage, right? Like, so I always tell people like a pilgrimage to Rome is going to be very different than the Camino. Right. And I think right. like understanding that, but even with the Camino, you better not fast all day or you're going to, yeah. you know, collapse yeah. on the way. Yeah. But, um, yeah. but yeah, there are lots of misconceptions about what right. it is. Yeah. Like again, you might be praying all day long or another one is, you know, I'm not good enough you know, I, oh, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't go to mass enough, you know, I don't yeah. go to mass every day or I don't go to mass every Sunday or whatever the, I'm not worthy of it yeah. is a big one that I yeah. hear a lot. Yeah. What about like, I'm not, um, I don't have like a need, like, cause we think of pilgrimage a lot of times, like taking an intention or, or asking questions or what if I'm too holy and I don't need to go on pilgrimage <laughs> because I don't need repentance or, you know, I mean, I think that could be another thing. Like, what if I don't have a purpose for my pilgrimage? Now we all do, but there could be that misconception. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Well, that, no, you're right. I think, I think one of the misconceptions is basically like, this is not for me, quote unquote, whatever yes. that means. Right. Yes. Like yeah. I'm not. I'm not holy enough. I'm not worthy enough. I'm not uh, Catholic enough. I'm yeah. not whatever it is. I'm not worthy of it. Or it's just it's not for me. You yes. know, that's somebody else is probably want to do this, yes. right? But I think they. I think oftentimes, and maybe it's on us that we don't do a good job of showing people what a pilgrimage is. And maybe mm-hmm. that's what we're trying to do here <laughs> today. Yeah. Um, but I think we start there because I think a lot of people just don't think or know what a pilgrimage is. They're 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 very daunted or. Um, yeah. yeah, very, um, yeah, yeah kind of scared of it. If I was going to say, yeah, it's like overwhelming, intimidating, or scary, intimidating. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it comes from the Latin peregrinus, um, like a traveler from abroad. But I, I mean, I think we can define it in different ways. I like to think of it like the trip seeking God. Like it's not just a trip, you know, it's a trip seeking God. And what does that look like? You know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. For what sure. Would you, how to, how to define pilgrimage? Yeah. To me, I, I always talk about it, it's a, a a couple words that I love to use are it's an intentional journey, mm-hmm. uh, prayerful, um, but not all the time. <laughs> not all the time, not not twenty four seven. Prayerful, we not do eat. constantly praying. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, contem- that's an, that's another thing, right? Like you can be prayerful and not like 
and not being in prayer. Like when Paul says to pray constantly, he doesn't mean we should be in a church all the time praying, right? We have to be doing our normal day, you know? So I think that's the beauty of the Catholic faith too, is that we understand that doing something prayerfully and intentionally doesn't mean that 24 seven, we're going to be praying. And I think that's a beautiful, like, um, so I love that. You're right. Intentional and prayerful. Yeah. 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 And we talk, we talk a lot about the both ends, right? Mm -hmm. Like it can be prayerful, but also fun. We can have wine and and, yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, so okay sorry i interrupted you so intentional prayerful prayerful contemplative Mm. um and purposeful right that you're 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 traveling for a purpose if you will that's that kind of connected to that bringing a prayer prayer Mm -hmm. intention with you Mm -hmm. um and uh yeah if 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 you if you kind of be open to the experience and be open to whatever the lord might have in store for you while you're there. I yeah. think that that's kind of a key mark of who a pilgrim is, yeah. is this understanding that I'm, that I'm open, I'm willing to learn, I'm willing to like go with the flow a little bit and be open to hearing what God might have in store for me on this journey. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you're not going into it with a, you know, you're like, maybe I just want to see Rome, but then you're open to, okay, I will go on this pilgrimage and be open to what the Lord wants to do with it. Right. I mean, there's nothing wrong with wanting to go to the Holy land because you've always wanted to go there and you want to take pictures, right? There's nothing wrong with that, but to then be open to what does the Lord want from this? Right. right? And I think that's, that's kind of the key of the pilgrim, right? Yeah. Like that openness and vulnerability even. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I, when I worked in college campus ministry, that's part of the reason I love doing the work of pilgrimage because it was, uh, we talked about this before, but you know, travel is so universally appealing, Yeah. right? So when I worked at the college and we did pilgrimages, we would get students that would come for a whole host of reasons, Sure. right? Of course, you'd have the, the campus ministry groupies that would sign up for literally everything yeah. that campus ministry did, yeah. right? But then you had the kid, like if we went to Poland, we would have the, the girl whose family was from Poland. She knows Polish. This is like, I'm traveling to my homeland mm. and, and it's a pilgrimage. Sure. Like I'm open to that. Mm-hmm. Right. Or you had the kid that was, we're going to Poland. We're going to Auschwitz. He is so stoked because he's a history major and mm-hmm. he was so interested in world war II. And again, like, sure, it's a pilgrimage. Great. But the, the yeah. hook in was the history side of things. Yeah. Right. Um, and so you, you would get students, you get these young people who were coming for all different reasons but to your point, they were open to the to the experience. Yeah. And then once they were there, then we could lead and kind of help guide and help them kind of break open the larger picture of what we were trying to do there. Yeah. Right. And I think that's often the beauty of pilgrimage is that it's university playing. Like who doesn't love to travel? Right. Mm-hmm. And so we often see this in our own pilgrims that they, maybe they're coming because their spouse wanted them to come. Maybe they're coming because they wanted to see the country we're going. Yeah. Maybe, maybe faith wasn't the primary reason they're coming, but as long as they're open to it, then, you know, if you can just crack that door open a little bit, the Holy yeah. spirit will wiggle in there. Definitely. Right? So, and that's, that's what I love about like the God and the Holy spirit uses everything you know he is not we can't trick him like he is willing he can use the most unwilling person but if that person cracks open the door he can use it and he he can use a good conversation over a glass of wine in piazza navona right he he can get in and that's what i love about this ministry is that and that's life too right like he does that in life he uses everything so what i love about my job at verso is helping people be open beforehand and then kind of stepping back and looking at what the Lord's going to do with it. Cause it's all the Lord, right? So right. if we can prepare people ahead of time to be open, then we step back and just let the Lord work and, and he will, and he'll do that in daily life. He'll do that, you know? And so my previous life was in formation of adults and, and just, you know, daily formation, like with religious ed, but now I get to do it in a, this a distinct way of, of the pilgrimage. And, and it's just, it's beautiful to see what the Lord can do with that openness. Um, you, like you said, even just a crack, right. he can, he can get in there. Um, so I think, yeah, like we're not saying that a pilgrimage isn't fun. We're not saying you're not going to take pictures. We're not saying you're not going to see a lot of the same things a, um, a tourist would see, but that there's a, maybe a different spirit and a different openness maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I, w- I wouldn't mind talking about that for a second. Like, yeah. what, what do you do on a pilgrimage, right? We kind of hinted at it a it's little true. bit. It's true. But like what, you know, if somebody was thinking about this, like what 
what would you say, you know, what does a day, what does a day to day thing look like yeah. on, on a pilgrimage? Yeah. Right. And I, you said about praying all, you know, like, are you going to pray all the time? One thing I really love about pilgrimages is that prayer does kind of form a part of the day, you know, whether it's morning prayer on the bus with some of our pilgrims or evening prayer as we're kind of processing the, the day or mass, especially like when you go to the Holy Land and you get to have mass in all these amazing places. I remember taking a, a trip to, I think it was a, one of my trips to Rome and you know, when the pilgrim found out we were going to have mass every day, she was like, what? Mass every day? <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> and she was picturing kind of a big Sunday mass that lasted about an hour and 10 minutes, you know, music. Right, right. yeah. Uh, hundreds of people there. She came away from our pilgrimage where we had these very humble masses in amazing places in Rome, right? But it would just be the 20 of us with our chaplain. And, you know, they were often like, what? 25 minutes, you know, with a little word of homily geared towards them on their trip. Right. She said the daily masses were her favorite part. And she just had this misconception of what it was going to be like. Right. And so that intentionality of, of that small prayer. Um, and so that's one thing I love about pilgrimage is beginning to pray with each other and to pray, you know, every day in different places. So I think prayer is definitely kind of one of the hallmarks of pilgrimage. It should, it just might not look like what you're expecting. Sure. Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, I think, you know, kind of answer my own question, if you will. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's important to know, like, yeah, you, of course, you're, you're visiting holy places, right? So you're going to be visiting churches, you're going to be visiting sites uh, that are associated either with the church or with the Bible or a, a, a saint, a life of a saint, right? Um, but I think it's also important to note that you're also, I think a huge part of pilgrimage is encountering the people and the places that you're going, mm. which also involves things like history and culture yeah. and food and music and the arts, right? And so on a pilgrimage, you know, on a pilgrimage to, to France, for instance, right? Yeah. If you go to Paris, right, you're going to see the Paris churches, okay? You're going to go to see the Notre Dame Cathedral. You're going to go see the Miraculous Metal Chapel. You're going to see St. Vincent de Paul, mm. okay? But then you're also like, we hope you go see like the Eiffel Tower, yeah. <laughs> yes. right? And you get some yes. French you know, pastries and, yes. and chocolate and things. Um, but learn about, you know, things like the French Revolution and what that did in the, the life of the church in France. Because so much of the church is wrapped up in the history yes. of the country. Yes. That right? we often don't learn. That we often don't know as growing up in the American, you know, we exactly. don't understand it. And so to go and experience it and to appreciate that. Right. Right, right. So yeah, again, to to me, it's 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 like, to me, it's the the best way to travel. <laughs> yeah. Because you get a little bit of everything. You kind of you experience the fullness of the place you're visiting. Yeah. And so not only do you get to see these really inspiring places that have, you know, very significant meaning and purpose and and all that, um, very inspiring there at, at those religious sites, but then you go see again these these historical landmarks you see these you know worldwide famous places yeah. that like of course we wouldn't want you to miss the Eiffel Tower <laughs> if you're in France right, right? but sometimes right. again people think again that misconception yeah. of like okay we're gonna be praying all day we're not gonna have time to do those fun things right we're just gonna it's gonna be super serious super you know intense yeah um, and in some ways it is but in other ways it's not um, right. and the Lord can like you know, I think our whole point here is the, the Lord can work through all of that, yeah. right? And and is in all of that those things yes. too. One of our our um, you know kind of visions is that holistic vision, right? We use that word at verso because it's it's this holistic experience because the Lord works through it all, right? He can work through that pastry, right? He wants us <laughs> because we believe in a, a sacramental worldview, right? We believe in the fact that the Lord uses the material world, right? He became flesh. He died on a cross. He touched things. He, you know, and so that's the beauty of kind of this pilgrimage is that we believe the Lord wants to work through everything. He made it, it is good and he wants to work through it. And so we want you to, to see these things. And I think the, the hallmark of a pilgrim is also that learning, that they're open to learning about other cultures, about historical events. And I mean, sometimes we use, when we talk about the tourist versus the pilgrim, we talk about like consuming versus learning, right? And so like, are we just there to consume it all or are we learning and growing and changing and being open, you know? And mm -hmm. so I think kind of that juxtaposition, like we want you to learn about the culture, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, 
One, yeah. of, one of the things I love to do is, on pilgrimage is, is talking with the locals, right, and mm. engaging people. And again, that whole idea of experiencing the fullness of the people, right? So if you if you go on a pilgrimage and you, you just kind of stay in your own silo, if you will, if you just like only talk to the people on the bus, only only do your own thing, never like truly try to talk to the locals, yeah. you kind of miss something, right? Yeah. So the story I'm, I'm remembering is so of all places you're going to kick out of this. So <laughs> one of the pilgrimages I led for spring break for the students, guess where we went on, on spring break pilgrimage. I, I, I want to spring break. It. That's your hint. It's spring Daytona break. Daytona beach. <laughs> close, <laughs> close. It was a beach. Okay. Other total other side of the country. You went to Hawaii. We went to Hawaii. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Waikiki. We went to, we did go to Waikiki, <laughs> but so the whole idea was go to Molokai. So St. Damien uh, of Molokai. Very nice. Okay. So we did this pilgrimage and again, we can get this in, in another episode sometime, but the story I'm remembering was, so we did a day of service with a local nonprofit. I forget the name of it. Um, but it was all about restoring the natural habitat mm. in Molokai. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And I remember them talking about it. So it's very, um, uh, you know, the Hawaiian people are very spiritual naturally, right? Mm. They have their own mm -hmm. uh, religion and, and things like that. And, and they're very connected with the earth, mm -hmm. right? And so I remember this, this leader that was leading us. So we were doing some restoration of the land there, okay? And I remember they were like placing rocks. They were like building a wall or something like that. And then mm -hmm. the guide was giving us this reflection about how the rocks like speak to them and like the way they place the rocks like they just know that like they move the rock around and then they they just have this feeling that eventually the rock is in the right spot wow or something like this, okay right, right? <laughs> uh oh i'm gonna build this wall incorrectly <laughs> no, yeah. but anyways but you know on the outset you know taking that out of context people be like yeah. this person is what are they on <laughs> Right, they're like the rocks are speaking to me. Like, what's going? You know, all this stuff. But again, knowing the the people, knowing the culture, knowing their kind of religious views, their spirituality, like yeah. it all like made perfect sense wow. of how they were speaking. But again, to kind of translate this into more Christian terms, like, but that was your idea, right? The sacramentality of the world that yeah. through the world we can we can know we can if we're open to it we can kind of see different things that other people can't if that if that makes yeah, sense yeah right um so yeah it's see and it's i love that like you took a pilgrimage to hawaii um <laughs> i think we should do another one i'm ready to, to okay. go um but it also shows you that like most people would not think about i mean i guess it was it was quasi mission trip right like you did service so you could say well that wasn't a pilgrimage that was a mission trip but they're both it's both in because of that openness to hear the lord even in Hawaii, right? Like we have yeah. to believe he speaks in Hawaii because why wouldn't he? Right. And so that right. openness, I think it comes back to that willingness to encounter God wherever and to have that. And I, yeah, in Hawaii so, <laughs> and maybe Daytona beach. I don't know. Probably not though. We'll stick to Hawaii. No, definitely. Definitely. Um, definitely. That's but, actually, so encountering people, I think that's something I learned from my dad too. Cause my dad is like mm -hmm. the, he is just like the most, yeah, love him to death, but he can be the most embarrassing person in the world. Right. Cause <laughs> You know, we'll sit down for dinner somewhere foreign, right? And then he'll just start talking to the waiter oh and just saying yeah. like these ridiculous things, <laughs> making these ridiculous jokes. But it's also beautiful because he just kind of opens up, yeah. like getting to know that person a little bit, yeah. right? Versus like we could just sit there, not talk to them, order our food, and not ever talk to a local person, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but he has this way of just kind of like, you know, kind of cracking people open, and then it. you get to know them a little bit, yeah. which is beautiful, yeah. right? Yeah. And getting out of our comfort zone. I At World Youth Day, people, you know, if you've ever been to World Youth Day, you know that part of it is meeting people from so many different places. And some people will trade things and they'll bring something. And I was like, well, I'm not bringing anything to trade because I am i don't talk to anybody. Like, I'm so <laughs> introverted. I'm like, why would I want to talk to these random people? So, like, random people came up to me. Like, this girl from Ecuador came and, like, tied a bracelet on my wrist. And then... I didn't have anything to give her. And I was like, nice to meet you. And I like was totally out of my comfort zone. Like why are random people coming and talking to me? But, um, but that's something that has to happen in pilgrimage too, is to be taken out of our comfort zone. Right. And whether that's being embarrassed by your dad or, you know, just being stretched in various ways, the pilgrims willing to kind of break out of our little shell. And, um, you know, like so often we talk about the tourist wanting comfort and luxury and, and I think sometimes we can say, well, is the pilgrimage not going to be comfortable? Well, 
we're going to sleep in comfortable beds. Maybe some nights we're not right. And so like understanding, what do we mean by that? Like if the pilgrim doesn't seek comfort, it doesn't mean that you're going to be sleeping on the ground all the time. Right. Although right. we did at world youth day, <laughs> uh, but not all the time. We slept in a really nice hotel. So that understanding of like, when we talk about a pilgrimage, maybe being uncomfortable or demand, you know, it's, it's not that you're never going to experience the earthly comfort of a bed. Right. Right. But that the discomfort might come in, you being open to talking to people, right. Or you losing your luggage and learning from that. Right. Um, and so I think sometimes the way we talk about pilgrimage can be scary, but again, it doesn't mean we're not going to drink wine necessarily. It doesn't (laughs) mean we're not going to sleep in a bed. Right. But that, that discomfort comes in other places. Yeah. Well, I think, I think what you're, what you're kind of hinting at is just the difference between uh, kind of the physical nature of a pilgrimage Mm -hmm the emotional mm-hmm. layers of pilgrimage, yeah. the intellectual layers, the the psychological layers, right? Like all of these, you know, physical and not physical comforts, if you yeah. will, or demands that's put on you, right? So I, the line I, I like to say is always that pilgrimage, pilgrimage asks something of us, mm. right? Mm. Like I love that. You, it, it demands something out of you, which yeah. is totally different than a vacation, yeah. right? Um, so again, this idea that, you know, you're physically traveling, right? Mm -hmm. And yes, you might be in a nicer hotel than you thought you might be, have (laughs) been in, or, you know, you, you shouldn't feel bad about having a nice meal on a Mm -hmm. pilgrimage. Right. Because I mean, part of that in, in my mind is as a person who runs a pilgrimage company, Right. Like we want people to like stay in a nice place and be comfortable. Right. Cause yeah. that's a reflective of our, re- reflection of our service. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, the, it, our idea there is like, if, if you're, if your basic physical needs are being met and you're comfortable, right. quote unquote, right. okay. You don't have to be lavish about it, but if, if you, if your daily needs are being met and you're not worrying about what's where you're going to eat, eat your next meal, let's yeah. call it, yeah. um, that allows you, th- your, your, all the rest of you to be present to whatever you're about to encounter. Absolutely. Right. So whatever you, you need, what's, whatever is being demanded of you, um, you know, psychologically, emotionally, right. um, intellectually on that day, if your physical demands are being held up with, if they're not being held up with, you can't even get to those other layers. If that right. Makes sense. Right. And I think there is, there is a time and a place maybe for a more penitential pilgrimage that you're, you know, like the Camino, Definitely. sometimes you're, you are sleeping in rough spots. And for the yeah. world youth day, we did sleep on rock, you know, <laughs> but I mean, I think about my, my trips to the Holy land and especially the first time it was so emotionally exhausting. I mean, I cried all the time <laughs> that I can't imagine going and not sleeping in a bed. Right. Like, I, like you said, like I needed that so that I could be ready the next day to receive that emotional, like that stretching that he was doing, not in a physical way, but he was doing emotionally and, and psychologically and spiritually. Um, and so I think that's really important. Just that, that understanding of that. Yeah. We, we want to meet basic needs so that you can be stretched in other ways, right. you know? Right. Um, so, you know, I think another thing I'd love to talk about with the difference between pilgrimage or a tourist um, would be kind of what are we taking on the pilgrimage and what are we like, um, you know, are we leaving everything behind? Are we escaping to go on this trip? Um, you know, because sometimes we think of like, I need a vacation just to escape from daily life, right? right? right. Um, I am fed up with, you know, X, Y, Z, and I just need to escape. Where I think in some ways a pilgrimage actually kind of goes deeper into some of those things in a different way, right? Definitely. Um, that we're not escaping, but that we're kind of entering into it. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and, and let's be clear, like there's a time and a place to oh, for vacation. Oh, definitely, <laughs> yes, yes. We're not anti-tourism, we're not anti-vacation, we're not anti-taking pictures. Yeah, no, definitely not. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, yeah. But the, I, the way I like to talk about it is that, you know, often um, when you go on a vacation, you know, you're, you're taught to leave your worries behind. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And you're taught to, again, like, yeah, that, you know, and escape is probably a little bit strong of a word. Right. But yeah. the idea being like, let me just kind of leave things behind. Yeah. Let me leave my baggage quote unquote behind and not worry about things. I'll get back to, I'll worry about work and about that, you know, family problem or whatever it is. I'll worry about it when I get home from a vacation. Yeah. Right. But the whole idea of a pilgrimage is that you sh- you should bring your baggage with you, mm, if you will, yeah. right? Because if you bring the problems with you, then that's that's 
that's when they'll get worked on, yeah. if you will, right? Yeah. That's when the Holy, the Holy Spirit can kind of work through the experience to help, you know, work through that baggage you might be working on, you know, bringing yeah. with you. So yeah. I love your idea of like, you're kind of, rather than escaping or leaving things behind, you're diving deeper mm-hmm. actually into those things, which all only goes back to this idea that it, it demands a lot of you, asks a lot of you, and it can be very emotionally and spiritually, psychologically draining because you're doing so much like hard work, let's call it of your life. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. We, we did a little exercise before world youth day with the pilgrims where we talked about like, what are you bringing and what are you leaving behind? And the leaving behind were things like your, um, you know, the fact that you want everything to go on schedule, right? You have to leave behind kind of your preconceived, you know, you have to leave behind your, you know, your, some of your expectations, right. And just be open. You have to leave behind those things. Um, but we are taking with you, um, you're taking with you some of this, like, um, like you said, like your prayer intentions, your problems. We had a, a, um, a couple on our world youth day trip who, you know, it was, they had a lot going on at home and it was hard for them to leave. And, in some ways they, they thought a lot about the home stuff when they were on on the trip, but that was a way for them just to kind of lay it on the altar every day at mass. Right. And just like bring it and say, Lord, you know, what's happening at home. We're here and we're, you know, we're not ignoring it or denying it. We're bringing it to you in this real way. Um, and so there, there are, yeah, I love that image of like, you're actually bringing your baggage with you, um, on pilgrimage. We all have baggage. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes, we do. If you, I mean, going back to what we talked about in that very first episode, you know, you, you'd said that you kind of don't like to admit that you're a, a sinner, you know, that we, we need yeah. help. Um, and, but once we realize it, like we all have baggage, we all have wounds. They, they look different. Like you can't compare yours to other people, but we all have it. And so just to allow the Lord to work with it and to, to deal with it because right. we can't. Right. right? Yeah. 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 Um, why do you think the difference, we've talked about some of these differences, you know, if I'm about to go on a pilgrimage, um, why are these differences even matter? Like how might viewing a pilgrimage in this way change my approach to the trip or change my experience of the trip? Um, when I, when I go on this trip to see it as a pilgrimage and to understand kind of some of these differences, how, how would that impact, I guess, my trip? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you just kind of make the most out of out of your pilgrimage if you if you have that open disposition yeah right if you i love that idea of like kind of leaving behind your expectations a little bit yeah and leaving behind you know um yeah again just being open to what might be in store for you yeah. right you're gonna have a such you're gonna have a such better experience <laughs> if you just kind of like what I, I guess the way i physically think of it is um uh, Henry Nouwen is this, is a spiritual writer who had this uh, this image of of closed fists, mm. right? And if you're walking around the world with closed fists and like really tightly wound, you know, so much stress is in a closed fist, yeah. right? Yeah. But you know, he had this image of like having open hands. Like if you're traveling, think about that. Like if you're traveling on a pilgrimage with like really tense closed fists and tight shoulders and all this stuff yeah. furrowed brows right like that's a much different disposition than if you're relaxed your hands are relaxed and open ready mm-hmm. to receive mm-hmm. and you know again relaxed shoulders relaxed you know posture and all this like that's just a totally different posture to approach and experience than one that's you know tightly wound up and and yeah. trying to hang on to something if that yeah. makes sense yeah um and the Lord can't get any, anything in those closed hands, you know, like <laughs> right. he wants to get, put something there and he can't because right. you're not letting him. Right. I think about two of my favorite pilgrims of all time were my aunt and uncle and they went on my second Rome trip. My aunt is very um, used to planning her own trip. So she loves Hawaii. She's been to Hawaii a million times and she has a binder of like what they do when and everything's very planned and organized. And our trip was kind of like, well, we're going to go here today. And you know, when you get there, you'll figure out what we're doing. Right. And it, it drove her crazy at first. Right. Because she's used to having control and she's used to knowing what's happening. And it was only my second trip. And I wasn't, I mean, I was giving them basic itineraries. Right. But with Rome, you never know when something might change. Sure. And it, it was really difficult for her to go on that trip because she wasn't in control. 
And she ended up being one of my favorite pilgrims because she realized that freedom of not being in control in a sense, right? And just letting it happen and being taken care of, somebody else taking care of you, right? And that's right. what we try to do on Verso, right? When you go with Verso, we try to make sure you're cared for so that you don't have to think about those things, which yeah. is lovely. And she was able just to really receive the graces of the trip. And um, I would love to go on another trip with her because she just had this openness. And her husband has this amazing openness to adventure. And I love my uncle because he has this saying, it's all about the story. It's all about the story. Whatever crazy thing happens to him, and he's had the craziest things happen to him, he loves it because he gets to tell a really great story. And I think of that with pilgrimage, that if you're approaching it as kind of this vacation that has to go just as you've planned right. when things go wrong it's a terrible vacation if you approach it as this pilgrimage of being open to what the lord wants to do and in my my uncle joe's words like it's all about the story even bad things that happen on pilgrimage you see the lord working through them and you come out on the other side one of my favorite quotes is gk chesterton an adventure is just an inconvenience is an adventure wrongly considered an adventure is an inconvenience rightly considered or something like that right so like yeah when we have this inconvenience we just need to see it as an adventure it's all about the story and i think about world youth day or you know a pilgrimage where you're not completely in control and our chaplain at world youth day said you know if you're not leaving this pilgrimage changed if you're not coming away from world youth day seeing how the lord has worked in it that it's just been a really lousy vacation to portugal <laughs> And it was great because it's true, right? Yeah, totally. And it's like, but if you see it as this beautiful way the Lord worked, even inconveniences are adventures. Um, and so it's that open hands, right? And it goes right. back to that pilgrim being that openness. If you clutch your hands too close, like, no, God yeah. can't put anything in them. Right, right. I love that. And, and it's not easy. Right? No. I mean, it, yeah, it, it's it's no. easy to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. When you're in the moment, you are mad. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but if your flight is delayed or you're, you, if you had to stay an extra night in a city that you weren't expecting oh to, you're not yeah. happy. <laughs> yes, yeah. And we both have lots of stories we could tell about moments where, yeah. Yeah. you know, and, but looking back, a lot of times it's in, you know, the retrospect, we see the lessons. Yeah, um, of course. And we see... Um, I remember I did a little thing on what is a pilgrimage um, several years ago um, in Rome. I filmed it in Rome on what is a pilgrimage. And I talked about how, you know, modern pilgrimages, we don't walk on foot or we don't have those, you know, classic inconveniences of pilgrimage. But there are plenty of inconveniences of pilgrimage, like delayed flights. The next day, my flight to Rome got completely canceled. I almost <laughs> didn't get out the second day. And I was like, why did I say that? Like, that was a terrible thing to say. Um, uh, but um, so, yeah, it's it's not easy to live it. It's easy to talk about it. For sure. But, um, and I mean, ultimately, I think this is kind of the point of our podcast is that, you know, whether we're traveling or not on pilgrimages, we are all on this pilgrimage of life and there are going to be inconveniences. There are going to be ways the Lord speaks to us and we have to be open to what the Lord wants to do. Um, and you know, when Augustine first uses the word for pilgrimage, St. Augustine uses it. He's not talking about a trip. He's talking about our daily life and our Christian pilgrimage of life. And so one of the things we want to do in this pilgrimage is to really look at what lessons have we learned on individual pilgrimages that can help us in our daily life. Because I think if we approach life the way we've talked about approaching pilgrimage, I think we'd all have better lives. Um, I mean, so often, I think especially now, like kind of post COVID, we can get like into like life is terrible or there's these inconveniences or my life is boring or I don't have meaning. And we see like a rise of depression and, and we see kind of this, especially young people asking really big questions about life, right? Yeah, Why am I here? Yeah. If we can see life as a pilgrimage, as this adventure, as this thing that we need to be open to, I think we solve that problem of the monotony of life or, or the, the, um, the, the, the emptiness of life. Sure. Um, and that's what I would love to do in this pilgrimage is to help people see their entire life as a pilgrimage. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so basically you're just saying this podcast is going to solve all of the world's it problems. It is. It is. <laughs> this is the antidote right here to everything. If you listen to us, you you're will gonna be, be happy. forever Full Good. of joy, yeah. <laughs> happy. You're never going to feel like down on life. Yep. That's basically <laughs> it. That's the goal. That's the goal. Um, so in the coming episodes, we are going to be talking to some pilgrims that took distinct, definite trips. They took pilgrimages, but they were given experiences and lessons for their daily pilgrimage. And so we hope that by hearing these stories, 
we can learn our own lessons too, even though we didn't experience them, they may speak to us um, as well. But yeah, and last thing I would say is, you know, we're talking about, well, I mean, you're kind of getting this idea of the pilgrimage of life. And, you know, there's, there's also, this, also this misconception out there that to do a pilgrimage, you have to spend a ton of money mm. and you have to travel for 10 days to the Holy Land mm. and do like the traditional pilgrimage, right? Yeah. But there are so many ways you can have these small pilgrimages, if you will, in your daily life. Or there, I mean, there's so many pilgrimage sites in and around your own, wherever you are, yeah. right? You, yeah. you can do a pilgrimage anywhere in the world literally as long as you have that that disposition that mindset of the pilgrim yeah where you don't have to spend a thousand dollars or five thousand dollars or more to go to the holy land you could get in your car and drive to a shrine that might be an hour away yeah. and have just as a profound of experience because be, again because of that intention because of that purpose be, behind behind what you're doing if that makes sense definitely yeah i mean we're really blessed to live across the street from a place that is a place of pilgrimage right yeah, yeah. i mean the grotto at notre dame think about the intentions that are brought there um i mean a lot of people are going to make a pilgrimage uh every saturday in the fall for <laughs> other reasons kind of pilgrimage, yeah. <laughs> but um but it's so true and i think that's a really good reminder that it's about the disposition of the pilgrim not even necessarily the destination right you know so well thanks john paul I Thank look you. forward in the future to talking about more trips, hearing more stories about Hawaii, um, talking about more of these, these lessons that you've learned. Um, but in our next episode, we're going to be looking at a, um, the World Youth Day pilgrimage and a pilgrim and her experience, um, maybe in something she wasn't expecting and wasn't looking for, but how the Lord spoke to her there. So join us next time. God bless. Mm-hmm.